I saw that David Attenborough documentary on chimps where they were eating those colobus monkeys and ripping them yeah. apart. I go, oh, this is why people are so crazy. We came from that thing. Yeah, exactly. The search for the origins of humanity is a story of bones. It is the story of our progress from ape to man. The time has come to take seriously the fact that we humans are modified monkeys. Fact modified monkeys. Modified monkeys? Is that what we are? Or is it just a mask some scientists want us to wear? Materialists seem intent on proving we evolved from ape-like ancestors. But is this really objective science? Let's take a look at the evidence. Dr. Casey Luskin, co-author of Science and Human Origins, shares his insight. The fossil evidence for human evolution is extremely weak. I would say that the case for human evolution is driven more by an undying belief in materialist ideology than it is actual hard evidence. Even world-renowned evolutionist Stephen Jay Gould admitted how shaky the fossil evidence for human evolution is. Most hominid fossils, even though they serve as a basis for endless speculation and elaborate storytelling, are fragments of jaws and scraps of skulls. Biologist Jonathan Wells has two PhDs, from UC Berkeley and Yale. He takes it a step further. The fossil evidence does not establish that humans evolved from apes. That's really a story to which the fossils have been added as illustrations. The illustrations and drawings of these missing links are often highly speculative. National Geographic, many years ago, had a page of drawings done by artists from the same set of bones. One looked like a gorilla, another looked like a modern human, another looked like a, a werewolf, all from the same set of bones. So the drawings are mostly imaginative, not evidence. It's a shame that most people take these drawings and the stories they tell as fact, even when they contradict the actual evidence. Take the drawings of Homo erectus, which often appear as intellectually inferior and far from human. But the fossil evidence paints a different picture. Below the neck, Homo erectus is almost identical to modern humans, and even its brain size is within the range of modern human beings. Homo erectus also used stone tools. They harnessed fire. And in fact, there's even some paleoanthropologists who believe that Homo erectus was capable of building boats. Homo erectus appears to have been a lot more intelligent than what scientists originally assumed and what the public is often being told. Same thing goes for Neanderthals. Quite a few paleoanthropologists think that Neanderthals buried their dead, that they have been discovered with signs of high intelligence, including art and culture. So although many artist impressions will depict Neanderthals as very primitive, if a Neanderthal were to walk in the door right now, you would not be able to distinguish them most likely from a modern human being. As if the drawings weren't enough, some evolutionists actually try to portray the ape-like fossils as more like human, just to fit the narrative of a missing link. A classic example is Lucy. Many people will be surprised to learn that just a couple years ago, it was discovered that one of Lucy's bones in the, in the fossil we call Lucy actually belonged to an ape. And it's very difficult to say if the entire collection of bones that we assign to Lucy actually belong to a single individual Lucy or even a single species. But it goes even deeper than that, to the point of depicting Lucy with human feet. They did not even find feet associated with Lucy's skeleton. She's almost always depicted as an upright walking ape-like species. Well, that kind of an interpretation is strongly disputed by the evidence. In fact, an article in the journal Nature studied the hand bones of Lucy and found that she had the knuckles of a knuckle walker. This PBS documentary shows anthropologist Owen Lovejoy manipulating the fossils to make Lucy walk upright. The perfect fit was an illusion that made Lucy's hip bones seem to flare out like a chimp's. But all was not lost. As a result, the angle of the hip looks nothing like a chimp's, but a lot like ours. And so when Lucy's pelvis had to be reconstructed using a quite a bit of evolutionary interpretation and imagination. Leslie Aiello is an evolutionist, about as mainstream as you can get. And she put it very bluntly. Lucy and her fellow Australopithecines are like apes, and the homo group are like humans. 
What's true of Lucy is true of other fossils. Another example is Artie, hailed as another crucial ape to man link, but the reality is very different. In fact, one report said that Artie's pelvis, which is of course in a very important bone for determining whether Artie walked upright, was initially like an Irish stew. It was nearly crushed to smithereens and needed extensive digital reconstruction. Articles in the journal Science and the journal Nature found that Artie's skeleton was more like a modern ape than it was like a modern human, leading them to say that probably Artie was not even a human ancestor. The evolutionists never tire of hyping the next big find. In 2009, a fossil was discovered, nicknamed Ida, that supposedly was our ancestor. And it was called our Mona Lisa, the eighth wonder of the world. And it was a holy relic, until it turned out that it was actually a lemur, not related to human beings at all. So what's left of the ape to man fossil story after we set aside the fudged reconstructions, the imaginative storytelling, and the pro-evolution bias? Just a handful of inconclusive fossils and a massive gulf between ape and man. Hominid fossils generally fall into one of two main categories, and that's human-like fossils and ape-like fossils, and there's a large, distinct gap between those two groups. From ape to man. It's time to lose the monkey bias. Without it, one can see what most people around the world already know. We humans are more than just another animal. Chimpanzees don't talk, they don't do mathematics, they don't speculate, they don't cook, they don't dance, they don't do music. Any cursory examination of the great apes and human beings reveal profound differences, biomechanically, biochemically, but above all in its nature and soul. Science does not need humans to share a common ancestor with monkeys. Materialism does. We are not materialists. We see the human soul. We experience love. We live with purpose. We fight for justice. We are the quiet majority, and we will be quiet no longer.